Hello. How are you guys? Great. You, I hope you're doing well. First of all, I want to apologize for this being the first Sunday with Summit Health in a couple weeks. HQ moved, aka Coach Amy moved, and so life has been upside down. Obviously, some of our other coaches are dealing with some really, really heavy things right now. So, let's see. I'm sorry. Give me one second. We're going to try to change my settings. It says that our settings are not great. So, we're going to try to adjust this. Give me one second. says the EPS is too low. Give me a moment. Sorry, you guys. I am not sure how to fix that. I apologize if, if the rate is not great, if the quality is not great. Um, just give me two minutes and I will try to figure that out. Otherwise, we will get rolling. I am excited to chat about what what we are going to today. Um, let's see, there we go. Health stream settings. Hmm. Okay. Viewer, is that it? Nope. Dashboard. I'm not sure. All right, well, we're just going to roll. All right, I've got some notes over here. We're going to talk about five tips or tricks to navigate this season. Uh, most, like, I love fall. Fall is such a special time of year. Apple orchards and you know, vineyards and just all the fun things, hay rides and corn mazes and all the fun things that people get to do this time of year um, are so special. And there's so many great memories to be made in this moment. But it also can be a really hard time of year. The weather is starting to get colder. We're inside more. We're tailgating. We've got football parties. We've got all these, you know, people have a lot of events they're attending. There's candy everywhere. And it just really can be a really tough season when it comes to nutrition and when it comes to maybe people having goals of weight loss. And so I want to talk about five tips that can help you to navigate the season with success. So first and foremost, I want to encourage you, number one, moderate the candy that you bring into your house. Something we talk about with all of our clients when it comes to success is it's not about willpower. You being successful through this season, whether it be October, November, December, is not really about willpower, but it's about setting up your environment for success. So we address what's called red light, yellow light, and green light foods. A red light food is a food that you cannot say no to. For example, a red light food for me is marshmallows. As much as I want to be able to bring those into my home and just enjoy one or two and know that I can say no, I can't. I will end up eating them over like one and then another and then another and then another and pretty soon I've had 13 marshmallows and I'm sick to my stomach and it's just one of those things I cannot moderate. Another thing that might be a red light food for me, candy corn. I love candy corn. I cannot bring it into my house. Now, if I were to bring in a small serving, I know I could enjoy that within my goals and I would be just fine. So for me, that's a red light food. Do not bring red light foods into your house. And the thing that you might need to have a conversation with is you might need to chat with your kids. You might need to chat with your hubby. You know, if they're bringing things into the house that you just honestly cannot say no to, you might just have to say, you know what, for what my goals are right now, I need you to understand this and I need you to help me and make some compromise sacrifices in this regard. When we look at yellow light foods, yellow light foods are foods that you love and enjoy and that occasionally you might have a tendency to overeat, but for the most part, you can moderate. Now for, for ladies, if we are, depending on where we're at in that time of month, perhaps we have extra cravings. Sometimes foods that normally we might be able to say no to during that time of our cycle, we may find ourselves going all in on, more so than normal. That might be considered a yellow light food. Maybe if we're having a super bad day at work, we've had an argument with a friend or a family member, 
and then we find ourselves not being able to moderate that mood. Those sort of those events maybe trigger it turning into something that's a little bit more red light. So yellow light are things that you can sometimes have in your house. You may have a tendency if triggered or if set off to overindulge in those things. And so just be mindful of those, be mindful of those. And again, when we are in those moments that might be triggering, we learn healthy ways to deal with it. We go through deep breathing. I'm so sorry, my allergies are so bad right now. Um, we go through some deep breathing exercises. Perhaps we do five minutes of box breathing. We do a little bit of reflection. There's just ways that we could deal with maybe a situation that would trigger us to stress eat rather than actually doing that or to kind of storm eat, you know. Green light foods are foods that you can have and you have no issue saying no to. And so keep that in mind. Having those foods in your house are no big deal to you. And, in, you know, if those things are things that your family wants to have, it's fine. No big deal. Okay, tip number two. We need to set our work environment up for success. Have a conversation with your coworkers. We know this can be an issue all year round. The, the office candy bowl, honestly, is such an issue for so many of my clients. I would love to outlaw the office candy bowl. But I understand it, it, that's hard and whatever, and if people can moderate, that's fantastic. But just the tendency is sometimes, you know, it's two in the afternoon, energy is dipping, I'm starting to get a little tired, I reach for one, awesome, and now I mindlessly reach for another, and pretty soon by five o'clock I had eight fun-sized Snicker bars and didn't even realize how many I'd actually had and didn't actually enjoy every single one. So talk to your coworkers if you need to, Ask them to just put the dish somewhere out of the way. Put it in the break room where you have to go in to intentionally get one instead of feeling like, oh, every time I walk by this coworker's desk, I'm going to grab a piece of candy. All right. So again, have a conversation with your coworkers if need be. Set up your work environment for success. If you're working from home, the same thing. And honestly, this can be, I have learned if things are, if I open my pantry and I see the thing, I desire the thing. But if I open my pantry and it's actually hidden or tucked behind other things, I'm not thinking about it. So something as simple as that. Don't have it sitting out on the counter. Do not have it sitting out on your desk. Don't have it in your office bookshelf. Put it away, put it in the cupboard, tuck it behind things so it's not top of mind. All right, that's tip number two. Tip number three is prep protein forward meals. This is a season where again, we're carameled apples, we're pumpkin spice, we're eating more baked goods, maybe apple pies, things like this. Of course, the candy. These things are far more common, whereas in the summertime, we're desirous of fresh fruits and crisp things like citrus and you know mangoes and things that are, that are just less carb intensive. So if the more that you prep protein forward meals, the more success you're going to have. Eating at least your body weight and protein every single day is going to keep you satiated. It's going to keep your blood sugar, um, blood sugar levels more stable. You're going to have more energy. You're going to be maintaining and building more muscle. Just eating enough protein is so key. And for you to have more willpower to say no in moderation to those sugary sweets, you need to make sure you're feeding yourself enough amino acids, enough protein every day. So set yourself up for success. Make sure, make sure your breakfast has at least 30 grams of protein in it. Get a really heavy protein forward lunch and make sure you're hitting those targets for dinner as well. All right, number four, never eat a piece of candy distracted. Implement mindful eating practices when you're enjoying candy or your caramel apple or your pumpkin spice. This is something that changed my perspective, it changed my life. We took a mindful eating course and what she did, she made us take five minutes to eat a piece of candy. She passed out a bag of candy. Every single person took one. We had to spend the first minute just literally we were blindfolded, smelling the candy, just smelling the candy, the, the feeling it, the texture of the wrapper, all the fit. And then you got to take a bite but then you couldn't chew it and just swallow it. You had to hold it in your mouth. You had to think about the texture. You had to think about the flavors. You had to, I mean, it took five minutes to eat this piece of candy, but what it did is it really made you understand and appreciate everything about that candy. 
And after one piece, if it's a candy that you really love and enjoy, and you take time to eat it piece by bite by bite by bite, you are completely satisfied. You have had time, number one, for all those signals to reach your brain and to say, oh my word, this is something that I enjoy. This is something that I'm loving. And you can be completely happy and joyful with one or two pieces. The other thing that you're going to find that honestly I found was that so much of that candy is gross. It is gross. I mean, Snickers used to be something that I loved. M&M's, oh man. But honestly, incorporating these mindful eating practices into eating a Snickers for me or into eating an M&M, in my opinion, they are gross. They do not taste good. They taste like plastic. They smell like chemicals. That's just my opinion. If you love them, you go all in. I'm just saying I realized I don't want those things. They're not good. And so that's the other thing that you might learn. If you incorporating these, if you incorporate these mindful eating practices, you will not plow through eight Snickers bars without even realizing that you did it. If you enjoy and savor every single bite and slowly mindfully eat those pieces of candy, you're going to stop far sooner because if you're really enjoying it, you're going to feel satisfied much earlier. So promise yourself to incorporate some mindful eating practices. Okay, number five and last and final tip, choose wisely. When I think about enjoying some of these treats, I, I decide what is the thing I want to go in on. If I'm at a gathering, you know, or a party or an event, and I see, you know, maybe grandma has her homemade, um, oh, well, let's say it's my girlfriend, Shauna, she makes the best special K bars. If I see special K bars, I am not eating the, you know, cheap little pieces of wrapped candy. I am saving, that's gonna be my treat, that bar. If you see something or if you know something's coming up, you're going to the orchard, you wanna have a caramel apple, then we don't need to have six Snickers at lunch knowing that we're gonna have a caramel apple when we get to go to the orchard with our family after work. Be strategic, plan out and choose the thing that you really want and choose wisely. You don't need to have all the things but enjoy the one thing that you really do want. So do your best to really survey all the options and then enjoy the thing that you choose. The other thing that I would really say is just do a little bit. Like if you're at an event or a family gathering or whatever it is, and you just wanna try a little bit, like ask your husband, ask a girlfriend, ask your kids, hey, let's each grab one, cut them into four, I can have a taste of each one and be really, really satisfied. And in the end, I'm eating a serving, maybe a serving and a half, instead of taking and wanting to try them all, and I end up overindulging because I feel bad throwing my food on the plate. That's it, you guys. Five simple tips. Number one, remember, moderate what you bring into your house. Number two, set your work environment up for success, even if you have to have a conversation with coworkers. Number three, prep protein-forward meals. 